I wonder why he thinks your name is Epic. It must come from something. I do not know the Tony El Chino reference, and I do have Google, so I could totally check, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna check. TVP, I assume you're opening two racks pressure into 211, but we'll find out. So it looks like second rack's going down, gas is already down, you're gonna get the reactor core, reactor core, reactor core, reactor core, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna get the tech lab as soon as this is done. Second depot, tech lab, tech lab, tech lab, tech lab, marines. On Marines, Marauder, Nuts of Shells, more Marines. Oh, Mr. Marines. So, yeah, two racks, good. And you're going to poke with this first Marauder, right? Rally everyone to the first Marauder and go. But you supply block, so now you might not even want to poke at all. That's, yeah, you're probably not going to poke at all because you supply blocked. Um, so let's check at six minutes. Yeah, you even throw it on a bunker. You're like, well, I supply blocked. I can't do anything. And that's true. So anyway, uh, six minutes, we have the benchmark. It's 24 workers and... Uh, a thousand dollars right and looks like you're gonna miss that by quite a bit it's such a shame because uh, now uh, so basically 700 800 yeah basically 700 bucks I mean you spent nine but these two things aren't finished yet so they don't really count so you're 300 bucks short on your on your benchmark and you're three workers short so I, I would guess that you know you've spent all your money and you're still short 300 bucks. So that's probably because you missed workers. You're three workers short. You had less money. You can't possibly spend enough money. That's how that works. So uh, another thing, constantly keeping these buildings working is something you're 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 missing out on right now. It feels like again supply blocking. This is very not a not a very clean game. So the problem with one basing is that one basing is like the definition of a timing based. Um, play play style right so there's two two different play styles macro and timing macro means i just want to generally do good all game i want to get a big income keep a big income spend as much of it as i can always have a big army and just you know go back and forth let him get a big army while i get a big army and we just big army big army big army big army all the time and may the best man win right that's the macro play style the second play style is the timing play style where uh you say okay if he's going for the macro play style he's gonna have his third started and he's gonna have enough workers to saturate three bases before he even has three bases and he's gonna have spent a bunch of money on upgrades that aren't finished yet and on tech that isn't done yet and on bases that haven't paid off yet and a macro play style is a very loose play style it, it doesn't get the biggest army uh, possible at every at every given moment it, it goes for just a longer term like I wanna have the biggest army possible at 15 minutes but in order to do that I have to have a smaller army at 8 and a smaller army at 10 so timing based uh, attack are I want to get the biggest army that anyone could ever possibly have at a certain second and then at that second go win the game um, and so that's that's what the build you're doing is designed for at the 211 is meant to be a timing based attack it's meant to get e exactly as large an army as you can and then kill the opponent and the timing window that we're shooting for is going to be 10 minutes so you want to have a three thousand five hundred dollar army at 10 minutes you can get all the way up to forty six hundred if you really crazy go for it um, but uh, 4,000 is more reasonable to shoot for. And 3,500 is what people tend to get in real games when they have to think about what their opponent is doing, deal with pro press, scout, uh, you know, lose a couple of things here and there, throw down bunkers that they wouldn't have to in, a, in an ideal build. So 3,500 is a little bit forgiving, you know? Like we say 3,500, but what we really mean is, you know, 3,500, yeah, but more if you can get it. And in this case, you've got uh, 3,000... 100. So we're 400 bucks short. We also want 37 workers and we're 7 workers short. That's bad. We've also got 400 bucks in the bank. So this is not very clean. And one base play has to be clean because you're screwed if it doesn't work. Right? Um, one base play is all about that 10 minute push. So if you don't make the push on time, if your push is smaller than it needs to be, if you don't have enough workers to be able to reinforce the push while also pulling enough workers to win the fight, uh, if you don't have crucial units or crucial upgrades, then then it can all go to crap real real quick and you just kind of lose. 
So right now, I would really love for you to empty and salvage that bunker at about the 8 minute mark. Like, if he hasn't come by 8 minutes and 30 seconds, he's not coming. And even if he is coming, you're one basing. You have the biggest army anyone can possibly have. You don't need a bunker on top of that. The only time you need a bunker is from 5 minutes until 8 minutes. Because in that window, Protoss has some stuff, and Zerg has some stuff, where they can, they can really go crazy and have a bigger army than you just because of warp gate technology. Uh, but once you have your first tank or your first air unit, you no longer have to worry about that. This bunker should be salvaged and it should be empty. Now you're pushing out 12 minutes. This is really bad, first of all, because he can have Colossus now. Uh, he can have Psystorm now. He can have 1-1 one, one upgrades finished now. So it's really bad to, to delay this push this long. Um, also because if he gets, if he's playing a macro style, like timing style is meant to counter macro style. It's meant to catch them off guard when they've spent a bunch of money on, on this, this extra crap. And if you don't catch them with their pants down the fact that they're playing for the long game is gonna pay off because playing for the long game means that if you wait long enough he's gonna have a bigger army than you uh, so this push is way too late you left way too much stuff behind you're not rallying your troops towards the front line you're just letting them pop out here and then trying to remember to pull them you made a command center uh, this is this is an example of a um, of a, a misunderstanding of, of what timing based play represents right um if you want to compete with him on economy this command center needs to happen around the same time as his nexus so if he gets a four minute nexus and you get a 10 minute command center at that point playing an economy game you're you're doomed you're never going to catch up from there so getting that command center is just a I don't like it at all. It's money that you kind of threw away. But one one reason that you might have gotten that command center is because the 211 doesn't spend an entire base's income mineral wise. Uh, your money is going to pile up. And the point of that, uh, the point of going 211 instead of 411, which would be able to spend all of your money, is that we want to pull workers. So we want to reduce our mineral income uh, so somewhat down to like 20 there are 18 workers on minerals and, and 6 on gas. Um, so when you have fully saturated m main like this, you're pulling in more money than you can spend. You've got uh, 1,280 minerals per minute. It's like 1,300. This is 25, 25, 25, 25. So you've got about uh, 1,000 that you can spend and you're pulling in 1,200. So you're pulling in 200 bucks a minute extra every minute. You're gaining 200 bucks that you just can't possibly spend. And also because you don't have enough gas, these buildings aren't actually spending the 250 that they could possibly spend. They're spending, you know, like uh, 200 or something. So you're really pulling in three, three or four hundred dollars extra per minute. So it just piles up in your bank. And there's, it's not like you're doing a bad job because you let your money pile up. This build can't spend all of your money. I mean, you are doing a bad job, but that's not why your money piled up specifically. There's also the problem that this build is not meant to spend all your money because you're supposed to pull workers. So when I say pull workers, I don't mean pull four workers. Pulling four workers is stupid um, because they're not going to do anything. Uh, your army at this point is bigger than his but only because he is messing up at, at 13 minutes when he's had an eighteen hundred dollar income for this long his army should be so much bigger than yours and it just isn't because he's a bad person uh so yeah i really dislike how you how you did this build this time um i don't know i know that i've shown matt and i know that i've shown tom and i i know that i've shown lots of people uh the 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 point of of the army composition here and how to use it in the unit tester but i don't think i've showed you yet um how to how to use your army in, in a tvp so after this is over i'll show you in the unit map tester so it looks like you're significantly ahead on on army size and stuff just because your opponent sucks uh you really shouldn't be ahead at this point because he's had so much bigger of an income than you for so long but he made all these gateways and he didn't use them. He's got 2,000 unspent dollars in the bank. And he's also working on, it looks like, 2-2 two, two upgrades. And uh, charge, which is extremely expensive. And he built this cannon. And he's leaving three stalkers behind. And he's made multiple observers. So uh, he's just kind of throwing money away. And then he attacks into you. This is really stupid of him as well. Um, and he's got 2-2 two, two and charge on the way. The longer he waits, the more likely it is that these things are going to finish. There's no incentive for him to attack into you here. So, uh, depending on whether you focus fire your tanks, I think you can win this fight. 
your army is much bigger than his. Like, just A-moving this army, you should probably still win. But if he gets all the zealots on your marines and you splash them all to death, you can still lose it. So his goal is to guardian shield and then go in. Uh, and your goal is to kill his sentries and then kill his stalkers uh, with your tanks so that your tanks don't kill your own marines. So let's watch. Looks like uh, you, your tank splashed here and got a bunch of zealot damage, but it also killed two of your own marines. There we go. Tank splashed zealots there again. Killed about three of your own marines. This tank splashed some guys. So anyone who's on fire, that's who your tanks are shooting at. Tanks do um, 50 damage versus armored, 35 versus versus zealots. So it's it's beneficial for you to focus fire the stalkers anyway, despite the fact that the, the zealots are more clumped up. But uh, on top of that, anytime you shoot a zealot with a tank, it's going to splash your own marines. So the force fields from the Protoss hurt him, actually. They prevented his zealots from getting close enough to your marines to cause you to do friendly fire against yourself. And he just did terribly on that first engage. But now he gets to warp in eight units at once. And uh, he's still got so much money in the bank. His army's a lot smaller than yours. Um, the reinforcements are what's probably going to do you in here. And I don't know if you're going to win. You're probably going to win this fight, too. It really depends on if he's making another immortal and whether he actually warps in like eight zealots at once or ten zealots at once once charge is already finished because charge will rip your army to shreds. You don't have enough SCVs to survive a charge, a charge push. So he's going to retreat to the high ground, warp in zealots, wait for charge. As soon as charge is done, he's going to charge in and die. Again, he's got two thousand bucks in the bank. I don't know why he went then. He should have waited for two or three warp ins and waited for two two to finish. Uh, this is really silly of him. So you pull him into pull the wings off of flies, and now you're mining and he's not, and it looks like you're gonna win. Da, 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 da. And you're making a wise choice here, just kind of containing him and letting him do whatever he wants, because if he can't get an, a second, then you win. So uh, I liked how you engaged. I liked all of the mistakes your opponent made. I disliked when you chose to attack. I disliked how many workers you chose to pull. I disliked um, just the, the, the way you were pretty sloppy early on with your build. I disliked that you built this second command center as you're pushing out. I, I mean, the way you pushed, the super slow, not enough SCVs pulled, hope that my opponent attacks into me style of pushing that you did kind of does favor uh, building the the CC as you go because if your push is going to take five minutes you really are going to need that other CC so I approve of this decision in the context of how you played the game it's just that the 2 one, one isn't meant to be played this way uh, it worked because your opponent did a lot of really stupid things but it feels like if you wanted to slow push with Marine Tank and Banshee, you could have done the same thing with a fast expand and had a much bigger army at this point. Because look, this is a $9,600 army, probably about ten, eleven thousand 11000 at 20 minutes. Uh, oops, sorry. So we say 10000 uh, minus 35. Wait, wait. Yeah. Divided by what? Four point five? Oh, not bad. So you, that can't be right. Anyway, I can't see the score screen. But normally, when you can see the score screen, you can click on the economy tab, and it'll tell you the average resources per minute of you, of you or whatever. And that's what I'm talking about. Is that you should be able to take the size of your army and divide it by the time since 10 minutes after subtracting out the $3,500 army and get an idea of how much money you spent per minute. So over the last 10 minutes, you made a $7,000 army, and 7,000 divided by 10 minutes means you spent 700 bucks a minute. Um, and in a macro game, y y a one base income is 1,200, and a two base income is 24, and a three base income is 36. So theoretically, in a macro style, you're supposed to fully saturate three bases and then as each base expires replace it with a new base so your average income is supposed to stay at 3000 the whole game and so when you do that army size divided by game duration you're supposed to get 3000 which is a lot more than 700 so that's that's what i'm saying is that the 211 it's 
it's meant to do a poke it's meant to do a really strong 10 minute push it's meant to give you a large army at all times it gives you a much tinier economy you only get a 700 dollar army per minute kind of thing um and that's okay because you're pushing before the the two base of your opponent pays off anyway you won this game hopefully you'll win all of your tvps and you won't need to to to, to hear any of this advice but generally push at 10 minutes damn it have a $3,500 army at 10 minutes and pull 16 SCVs. Uh, those are those are the advice I have. <laughs> if you're gonna do a macro playstyle, you should do a macro build. Yeah, that's what I mean.